Hey everybody, David here. Welcome back to the Bears Den. Hopefully you are doing well and also having a great week so far. And in today's fitness video, I am gonna be talking about long length partials. Hopefully you can read my writing. I try to make it as legible as possible, but sometimes it's pretty sloppy. Uh, going back into this, the reason why I wanted to touch on this topic today is just because I've been seeing this thrown around a lot when I've been watching YouTube videos and educational pieces. A lot of people have been talking about long length partials and if they should do it, if they not shouldn't do it. And I really wanted to get some clarification on who should and who shouldn't. And you know, if you're familiar with the channel in this community, I'm really a big proponent of individualization and specificity. So I just wanted to let you all know if this training style is gonna be most beneficial to your goals. If you enjoy the science behind fitness or looking about uh, workout form and technique, I highly encourage you after you get done watching this video to check out the rest of my videos on the channel. Greatly appreciate any support. Now with all that out of the way, let's hop into this long length partial video. To start things off, I wanted to kind of talk about who's going to be looking for these long length partials, basically what type of demographic your goals per se. And we're going to be looking at strength and hypertrophy. So if that's your goals, maybe you should look into this. Maybe you should check it out, see if it works best for you and you get those muscle gains or, or the strength gains that you're looking for. If you hit that plateau, um, I highly encourage you to check it out. But for me per se, if I was like working with a client and they just wanted to be more athletic or I was working with a high school athlete per se, then I'd probably avoid long length partials unless it's like the off season and we're trying to build that strength. And this is going to be a perfect Thing to work on that muscle group per se. Let's say they have weak legs. I might add that long length partials in their program in some shape or form. And I'll get to that later on in the video here. But if you're like just wanting to do cardiovascular activities and stuff, this probably wouldn't be beneficial for you. So just a little heads up with that. And then going along with this, going along with the athletic performance side of things, limited range of motion. So ROM basically, that's a short for that. And the reason I want to talk about this is because with that long length uh, partial position, you're usually in that lengthened position and then you just kind of shorten it from there. I'll get into more explanation in a second. But you're not doing that full range of motion. So athletes usually are all going in all different types of planes when they're moving around side to side, forward and back. And you know sometimes they might be in that limited ROM, but usually they're in a full range of motion, especially like a runner for prime example, they're doing full range of motion. And then when you're jumping, you'll probably be in a full range of motion. You're not doing like a half jump if you're going up for a header. So I just wanted to get that out of the way too. It's a limited range of motion here. So that's kind of goes along with the long leg partial uh, training style. And then most of the time it's time under tension. So you're doing that short range of motion. So you're getting a lot of time under tension with that muscle that you're working out during this long like partial here and with the importance with that is i'll touch on another video what time under tension is but usually the more tension you can put on the muscle the more those muscle fibers are going to break up that you could gain that strength or that muscle that's getting a little bit uh into the scientific stuff about how muscles work and all that jazz but that's why you're working out you're trying to tear those muscle fibers and repair them to gain that growth to gain that adaptation so something to think about there with time under tension and then an extended length going back to what I was saying so let's say you have a bicep curl I'm gonna put my arm up here this isn't going to be the long length partial all the way down the eccentric part so basically I know you probably can't see it on the video but if I have my arm fully stretched and I'm just coming up like this that's gonna be that long length partial okay so we're not going up as high we're not doing that full range of motion okay and that's just something to think about. So we're not fully moving through that movement. That's why you're putting a lot of time under tension during the most difficult time of that movement here. And it's kind of what I mentioned, it's at an extended length of the muscle. So this isn't extended, this is extended. So having my arm out in front of me, that's extended here. And then key facts with this, kind of going back to the range of motion, the bottom half or the stretch position, basically what that is, is kind of what I was mentioning before leading into this, you're gonna be training the muscle in that stretch position. So if you're doing that squat, it's gonna be at the bottom half of the squat. It's not gonna be at the top of the squat. And what I mean by that is in that lengthened position, so going down that eccentric and then coming up and then going back down, you're not gonna go that full range up and that full range down, okay? You're just gonna hit it halfway there. 
putting a lot of tension on that muscle, a lot of stress, trying to break those muscle fibers to get that hypertrophy or strength gain that you are looking for. And it might be an added benefit to uh, use full range of motion, then limit a range of motion. That's what I do in my workouts and I really enjoy it. So usually I do that full range of motion, eight reps, and then towards that end, I do like three to four long length partials, depending on the workout I'm doing that day, depending on the muscle group. And this is great for any muscle group in my opinion. If you are lacking in some type of area on your body parts, along with two, you're just trying to gain pure strength. If you have hit that plateau, hitting these long length partials can be very beneficial. And then kind of what I mentioned before, it's restricted ROM, the bottom half of the position. So the restricted ROM, again, like I mentioned, you're not doing the full range going into that. And that if you're trying to be athletic, it might not be something you're trying to look at here. You need to be in a full range of motion per se if you're athletic because you're moving in all planes, kind of what I mentioned before. And if you're just trying to stay healthy, live a healthy lifestyle, trying to move frequently, then training in that full range of motion to do daily activities such as carrying boxes, lifting boxes, cooking, walking, mowing the grass, that full range of motion might be a better option for you than doing these long length partials. But like I mentioned before, you might be getting a very big benefit by combining the two. I love to combine the two when I work out. So going on from that, you got muscle tension going into this. So you got the lengthened part here, which equals more time under tension. And basically that's gonna equal more stress on the muscles to adapt to that stressor. And the longer that muscle is getting stretched in that limited ROM position with a lot of weight on there uh, or weight that you can do, you're gonna, you're gonna put a lot of stress on that muscle and it's gonna have to adapt in some shape or form. If your diet's right, if your recovery's right, then if you're hitting all the boxes, then you're gonna be able to come up, come, uh, get over that plateau that you're hitting with these exercises because you're chaining up your style, you're not just doing a full range of motion, and you know overall, this will be an added benefit. Another, another thing you can add to your arsenal instead of always just doing the blatant free times 12, so free sets, 12 reps, you know, a lot of people talk about that, just doing full range of motion. It can get boring, so maybe just do that limited ROM, long length partials, hitting that muscle, big stretch on it. That could be something to look at in your program. And you know, you've probably seen a lot of those old guys doing half on bench like this. Now, I'm not saying that's the best thing in the world, I, you know, but those old guys are on to something there, okay? They're on to something doing this. and. It, you know, it's it, it, my mind was blown when I looked at it. I was like, okay, he's on to something, you know. And I always have a thing when I say when I talk about exercise. There's nothing such as a bad exercise if you can back up why you do it, you know. And also too with the long length partials, if you can back up why you're doing long length partials for that person, then hey, it's not a bad exercise. But you know, those older guys usually aren't doing the long length partials right. <laughs> but overall, they their heart's in the right place, I should say. So just wanted to get that out there. And then also, it, basically, time under tension, you know, it's going to lead to greater strength and muscle growth. Um, like I mentioned, tearing the fibers, doing it the right way. You could see greater benefits than just a regular program, per se, that you are doing on your own with full range of motion, with, you know, perfect form and technique. Because that can only take you so far. you got to change up styles. you got to put different stressors on the muscles, and long only partials might be the way for you. So going into exercise application, you could do this on any exercise, okay? You can do this on a bench press, you can do this on a squat, you can do this on a bicep curl, you can do this on a tricep extension, you can do this on a pull up. The list goes on and on and on. And I do this a lot mixing up my workouts. So some days I will include long and partials, some days I won't. And I'll tell you what, I really love the long leg partial for the dumbbell fly. I stay in that uh, time under tension position so that that limited ROM position for that whole fly in the most stressed part, and man, I get a big, big stress in that. So you might want to try that out with a dumbbell fly. It might work for you. You might feel a lot more. Um, big fan of that, with doing it in that movement. Same with the biceps. I'm a big fan of doing it with the biceps and the triceps as well. So enough of me yapping about my own stuff, but just want to mention, big fan. But like I mentioned before, I do that full range of motion, then I hop into that limited ROM. So I hop into the long leg partial style thing. So, and me personally, I probably wouldn't recommend just doing long leg partials for your whole workout. You know, I kind of feel like that defeats the purpose. I feel like you need to train both and I'll hop into that later in this video. 
but just wanted to get that out of the way. So some benefits of this, you got increased muscle activation. So you might feel the muscle working a little bit more when you're doing these lonely partials. You might feel the nerves activating, doing that mind-muscle connection. You might feel that more when you're doing these long length partials. It might be something that you're like, oh, I'm getting a greater benefit. I'm feeling it really. And that might be important for you to feel this movement and have those nerves making sure they're sending signals to that muscle, the fire, to do their work and get that big stretch and get those benefits that you're looking for. So if you haven't felt something like that before, this might be something to look into for sure. Like, you know, I know some people, when they do a cable chest press, for prime example, they're not feeling it. But I have trained some of my clients where they're in that long length partial position. So you're putting a lot of time under tension on that muscle and they start to feel it. They're like, oh, okay, this is what I'm starting to feel with that, with those nerves firing in a certain position. And I'm a big component of once you get stagnant, making sure to train that exercise in different positions and see how it feels. And then going on to target hypertrophy, this might be a very big benefit here. You're targeting that solo muscle here. And just going off that is basically the goal of hypertrophy is to train strength and cardiovascular, kind of getting that happy in between there. And this might be something good for that range to keep the um, hormones in the blood. And that's what hypertrophy is trying to do. You're trying to keep the hypertrophy in the blood to get that pump, I guess you could say. So that's what we're looking at with Tiger hypertrophy. And you know, if you're doing this, getting those gains from this, then that's what's very important. So it's a benefit to long length partials, hitting that hypertrophy range and getting a pump, I guess you could say, but you're also getting that muscle adaptation that we're all looking for. So getting stronger, getting more muscle growth. And now I wanna hop into the considerations. So joint stress, doing this all the time can put a lot of stress on your joints. It can weaken your joints as well. That's why I mentioned you might wanna do that full range of motion into a long length partials with the limited ROM. It's something to look into. We want to strengthen our joints. We want to be healthy. And you know, if we hurt our joints, we could be out for a while and that's not going to be well because we can't do our daily activities in life and stuff's going to get weak and then we're going to have to start by one. So looking at the joint, kind of, you know, the previous video I made about joint health, you know, I talked about this a little bit, he, reaching that full range of motion. Watch that video if you're like unsure about it. It kind of explains it a little bit more, but looking into this, the long leg partials might be damaging to the joint health just because you're putting them in very, very stressful position here. And looking at that, it could be a bad thing, okay? If you're repeatedly doing the same exercise, doing that long leg partials for your workout, a lot of tension on there, it could tear, you know, don't want that. And then the last one is balance ROM. This is what I mentioned before making sure you're doing full range of motion with long leg partials. And that's gonna go along with that joint health too, keeping the joints healthy, doing that full range of motion. It's gonna be beneficial overall to your overall program, to your gains, to living a healthier lifestyle. It's just something to look at and it's not gonna keep you behind if you are balancing both in the correct ways. And you know, if your goal is to just get pure muscle, pure strength, then hey, I would mix this stuff, okay? So do some only partials with some full range of motion just to keep the joints healthy so you can progress and you can progressively overload in a healthy way, okay? And progressive overload just means you're gonna add a little bit more weight, you're gonna take less rest, it just depends, your adaptations to your muscles, and that's important when you're looking at a program here. And that's what I'm talking about with the balanced ROM. Overall, we want to make sure that we can do everything right without being hurt, okay? So hopefully you all learned a little bit more about long leg partials. I know it's very popular. Just wanted to give you all a better understanding on how to use this, what's the best way to use this, and you know, I, I'm a big component of long leg partials. I think they've been helping me get over my plateaus in my workouts, but also too, you gotta look at the specificity, the individualization, going back to that. You gotta see if this is gonna be worth it to you. You got to make sure your form and technique's perfect because if you do this wrong, you could get too much of a stretch and you could get a strain, you know, hurting the joints, kind of what I mentioned. So look into all those things before you do this, okay? I want to mention your health and your safety is the most important thing before trying new things. So make sure you're doing it in the right way. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I am more than willing to help. And with all that out of the way, I will see you all in the next video.